know they say that cat shaft is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Ignore him. He thinks he's a black James Bond. That dude was real. He think it was me. The man is back. That's right, Shaft. Uh, you might remember the 1971 movie that started it all, starring Richard Roundtree. It sparked several sequels, including Shaft's big score and Shaft in Africa. Before the whole thing was revived, uh, a little less than 30 years later in 2000, by the late great John Singleton, and that was called. Shaft, uh, Samuel L. Jackson took over the role playing the nephew of uh, the original Shaft. And now, almost 20 years later, it's back and that's called Shaft. I guess we just don't feel like we have to call this movie anything but Shaft, you get the thing. If you go pursue this investigation, I'm gonna have to babysit your ass. Damn! Oh, look at here! How long's it been? Hmm, never long enough. Lady Syphilis, Madam Chlamydia, it's lovely to meet you both. That's Junior's mama. She a little bitter. Can you imagine going into a meeting today and saying, I want to revive that? Isn't this perfect for the Me Too era? Uh, well, you know what? It all is forgiven when it comes to Shaft, and particularly when it comes to Samuel L. Jackson, who plays him as this sort of out of touch, this guy weaned on a world that doesn't exist anymore, a streetwise, street savvy guy. But they've come up with a premise where that can be tempered where we can have another character, now his son, JJ, who he hasn't seen in 25, 30 years, whatever the number is, uh, basically abandoned him as a baby, abandoned his mother as well, Maya, played by Regina Hall, who's always welcome on any screen if you ask me. The son is played by Jesse T. Usher, and he's played as a very, uh, you know, millennial kind of guy, complete opposite of the father he never knew. He uh, works at the FBI as a data analyst. Uh, he's very well put together, in other words. And so when a uh, murder mystery sort of brings the two together in unlikely circumstances, it turns out JJ's good friend was a war veteran and also a drug addict is found with a massive overdose dead one day. And that leads to a mosque and suspected uh, Islamic terrorist and a cover organization called Brothers Helping Brothers. He winds up going to his father, needing some help, I guess, in the ways of the street because that's what Shaft thinks he's going to do for the younger Shaft here. Teach him the ways of the uh, street world uh, that he knows. And maybe the son will teach the older Shaft the ways of his world to have a little decorum and not treat people like they were in his own world when he came up when the street is the law and you know instead of uh, uh, pleasantries you just shoot him in the knee you shoot him somewhere else you go for the violence to get your point across. Uh, I love all of these characters working together. It's a lot of fun, actually. And what else do they do here? They bring in, in the film's last third, the original John Shaft. That's right, Richard Roundtree. And so you've got three generations of Shaft, and they're going out in the street to solve this mystery. What is wrong with you? You picked up a bat. You can't beat up a woman. Why not? Because she's a woman. That's like... Misogynistic. You the one being misogynistic. I ain't mentioned her gender. Okay. I'm an equal opportunity ass whooper. Oh, damn. Oh, there's no non-violent people in Harlem. It is written by two screenwriters who come from television sitcoms. Kenya Barris, uh, a blackish. He also uh, was a writer on the uh, movie Girls Trip. And Alex Barrow, who uh, did the Goldbergs and Family Guy. You get the idea. They know something about jokes and things, and they put a lot of that dialogue in it, which really, for my money, really livens up this movie, makes it welcome, and makes it a lot of fun. But I have to applaud Samuel L. Jackson. Nobody does dialogue like this, and they've written great lines for him that are really funny. And the movie works on that level just pure entertainment. It is not politically correct, but it knows it's not, and it winks at that, and it tries to make up in other ways for that. So all of you critics out there and the PC police, go at it. I'm sure you will. But for other people, you can have a lot of fun with this version. The director, Tim Story, knows exactly what he's doing with this movie and what he wants this movie to be. And it is what it is. And if you can't accept it, I say no. But for the rest of us who just want a good old violent time with Shaft and maybe Shaft gets a few lessons about life now in 2019, I say go.